What was your first camera that you owned? <laughs> I had a HP, I think it was an HP PhotoSmart. And the funny thing was when I, when I got that, I kept asking my mom, this was in 2006, I kept asking my mom, you know, I was like, I want a camera, I want a camera. And there was this camera with a printer bundle, right? And this was around Christmas. And my mom, she's really spiritual, and she was like, it's Mercury retrograde, you don't want to do that. You know, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, what is Mercury retrograde? And she was like, you aren't, you, it's bad to buy electronics. And I was like, that's bogus, you know? Like, I want this camera. Like, I'm not listening to your spiritual stuff right now. Like, I want a camera for Christmas. So, like, Christmas comes, and there's this big box under the tree, and I knew what it was, and I was stoked. So I open it up, I tear through it, and there's the printer, there's the wires, there's everything there, but the camera's missing. There's no camera in there. And, like, I thought it was a joke. Like, I thought my mom was trying to be, like, told you, you know, and like everybody else is opening their gifts and I'm like, what's going on here? You know, and I was like, where's the camera? And I'm like kind of laughing and they're like, they had no idea what I was talking about. And after a while, like I realized they weren't kidding. Like there was really no camera in the box. And what happened was they sold me the last, or they sold my mom like the last model. It was the floor model. The display model. Yeah. And they didn't put the camera in there. And so like, I was just like, oh my God, mom, like, you know, like I, she was right. And after that, I was listening to her spiritual stuff, you know, I was like, whatever. But then like they, the HP company, they sent me the upgrade for free because they felt bad. And so that was the first camera I ever had. And yeah, it was, it was sweet. It was, it was a, it was a nice little camera. It's just a point and shoot, but that's really where I, I started. And did you immediately love photos? Yeah, and like actually here I'll show you like the first photo I ever like took that I really, really liked. Like it was, it's really nothing, you know, like now that I look at it, like it'd just be a normal everyday shot for me now. We had some nice shots, but like there was this one. I mean, this one, like, you know, I look at it now and I just kind of laugh. Like there's just really, you know, if I can zoom. Because I think it is going to be small. But, you know, like... And that was, a, that was somewhere in West Coast? That was, yeah, it was just, well, it was in Phoenix. Yeah, I was in Phoenix, Arizona. I was there with my friend Dan, and, you know, it said lights, Phoenix, Arizona. The picture that made me fall in love with photography. And uh, that was March 06. So I guess I got my camera in 05. But, yeah, you know, like... But it was just simple, and after that, it was just, you know, I went crazy. Where can you uh, look at your images online? Uh, I have a website at www.rockymock.com, and then I have, a, I, have, I have links to a Flickr on there, too. But that's, that's where you can find my images, at rockymock.com. So how often do you shoot? Every day. Every day? Every day. And then I, uh, last year I was actually really happy in 2011. I completed my first 365 project. That's where you shoot a picture a day for a year. If you go on there, you can see it. Um, so that's a year's journey in your life. Yes, every day. And it was, it was hard, man. It was tough. Like sometimes it was just so hard. It was like every day, you know, like it's just. Uh, some days you just didn't want to shoot. I mean, like right there, you know, I have a picture of toothbrush and combs and... So you didn't really want to shoot? <laughs> yeah, some days, you know, you just... It was like, what? I, I don't want to do this. And the funny thing was, one day... Here, I'll show you if, if you want to look at it. I know you've shown a lot of images, but... There's this one day that I just like, I always laugh. I always think it's really funny because... It was in, uh, I believe it was, we'll find out for sure here, but I was so sick. I mean, I was just puking. I, I had like the flu, it was something bad, you know? Like I just, I was so sick. I never remember being that sick before in my life. Is this in the US or China? Yeah, this was in the US. This is before I went to China. Um, let's see, I think we'll find the date for sure. Today marks the sickest day I've ever been sick. While not puking, I unwillingly took pictures in my basement. These nasty webs describe my head. The light's on, but there's <laughs> all over it. So like, you know, like it was just, it was kind of funny because like it was a light bulb just covered in cobweb. So basically Dust. it was like my head, you know, like the light's on, but there's just crap all over it. Like I was so sick. And so some days were just really hard, but it, overall it was, it was a great project. I was so glad I, I finished. I was so glad I could do it. And uh, it was kind of weird. I picked a good time because at the time when I started, I didn't even know I was gonna go to China. And then, when I did it, my grandma, she lived next door, and she she had a stroke, and then we had to move her to a nursing home, so I captured the last moments of her being there. 
I remember Osama bin Laden died. Um, like I did like a series, some paintings that I captured. So it was just like it was. It was a cool time. It was a cool time to do it, you know. And then obviously I went to China and I went through all that too. So it was. It was just cool capturing that, you know. It was, it was a good time to start it. When you document your life for a year on images, is it easier to examine it from looking at them? Like as far as like looking back, like examining. Does it feel like every day? Does it feel like every day of a year when you look at them, or is it more a, co a full collection of? At the time, yeah, like during the project, yeah, definitely. I was like, oh yeah, every day, like I remember that day, like looking back, even like, you know, looking back a month ago, I'm like, I remember that day, I remember that day, I remember that day, but now looking back on it, without a doubt, it's just a collection of images, and it's just like, it, it in a way, it kind of baffles me, like I, I look at them, and you know, it is a collection of images, but, you know, it's weird to look and say, this was day, you know, day 297, day 298. It's just, it, it, it is, it's like a collection of images now. It's just like a book, you know? It's crazy. It's weird. Could you just briefly go into why you went to China or how you ended up in China? Yeah, my brother actually, he, uh, he teaches out there and I was working a few jobs and I didn't care, you know, like I was like, well, I say I didn't care, like, I was just hanging out, I was working two jobs, and that opportunity came up, and I f all I wanted to do was photograph out there, and so I was like, yeah, this is, this is good, this is my time, so I went out there, and I uh, actually became a teacher, and I didn't realize I would become a teacher, you know, like, n none of those things I figured would happen, and uh, so I went out there, and I just started photographing, and I loved it. And one of the, one of my favorite things, uh, one of my favorite pictures is this one here. This was this was on film, and this one I, I've never seen. You never see English writing out there. And uh, I was walking around, and not just like I always would, I would just walk the streets, take pictures. And this one came out, and I saw "Free Your Mind" on it, and I was like, "Whoa!" And I think a lot of people they think you know like China is just like very very communist, you know, people say like, when I tell people I went to China, they're like, what, why would you go to China, you know, and like my response was always like, why not? And they think, you know, like I think people who haven't been to China, they think it's very communist, they think it's very like, scary, very bad. So when I see this, the free your mind, I don't really necessarily think of the Chinese needing to free their mind, I think of other people looking at China, they need to free their mind. And there's just like this guy riding on a bike, you know, like, this image just showed to me like, you know, China, it really wasn't, when I took the picture, when I saw that, you know, like I just thought right away, like China is not what people think. So when I showed people that, like when I posted it, like I just hoped that they got that, you know, they're like, wow, you know, they see like English writing and they're just like, wow, maybe China isn't, you know, isn't that bad. I know they probably didn't think that, but, and then this one. Well, it's just the stereotype of China. It is like, you know, like people, they they really did. They thought like, you know, and when I first got there too, I had those stereotypes. People didn't, people looked at me like, you know, like I had this beard and I had long hair and I was white. So people looked at me and they were like, who's this guy? You yeah. know? And at first I was mad. I was like, you know, what are you looking at? Like, I thought I was going to have to like fight some Chinese people. But it was like, after a while, I, all I would do is I started talking to him. I got kind of good with the language. So I started talking to him and everybody was really friendly. And... The, the most important thing I, that helped me with photographically in China was people. Um, like this one here, this was just some homeless guy. And what I did was I gave him five RMB, which is like a little less than a dollar, but that's quite a bit to just give somebody like who's homeless. I gave him five RMB and I asked to take his picture in Chinese. And he was like, yeah, sure. Like, he, he just shook his head yes, and like, see, he's smiling. And at first he was looking at me like he was mugging me, you know, like he didn't <laughs> like the way I looked. But when I showed that I knew a little Chinese and I talked to him, like, he was just fine. Like, he posed for a picture. And so, you know, the people were really friendly, and that's the thing. Like, I think that's what helped me the most was like, now I have no problem asking people. Like, I do projects with pe involving people a lot. And that definitely helped me. Like, if you can do it in Chinese, like, with people who don't even speak English, like, when you do speak English, it comes so much easier to talk to people. Does the camera break that barrier for you? 
talking to uh, people. As far as talking? Strangers, just going up to someone you don't know and asking them a question. Yes, yes it does. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm like, I keep the camera to my side, you know, like I don't want to point it at them and say, hey, I'm taking a picture, would you like to be in it? I don't do anything like that. I, I usually just go up, have, ask them something, ask them how they're doing, and then they kind of see the camera and they assume something's going on. So I ask them, and it sometimes it, it does suck. Like when people say no, it, it really sucks. But at the same time, I don't, I don't go away and like snap from a distance or anything. If they don't want their picture, I don't take their picture. And that was the same in China. You know, lots of times people would be like, no way. You know, and like you, that's the hardest thing is rejection. Like I think when people, when people think about it, like it's really hard to photograph strangers because it is like when you're when you're not used to it, it's it is hard. And the reason it's hard is rejection. Like nobody wants to be rejected. I think people start saying yes once you get used to it because you come in more confident. Rocky, uh, thanks for being a current artist. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure. Thank you.